Be yourself. How many times have we heard this in our life? Just be yourself. And that's good advice, but what if you have no idea who you are? Human beings are incredibly complex creatures. There's a lot to us that we just don't know yet. Here's a response to this statement. Be yourself by being someone else. And I know that sounds weird, and I'm not saying you should be exactly like the person sitting next to you tonight, but what I'm saying is that by imitating other people, you absorb their traits into your personality. You take what works and leave what doesn't. It's how you discover who you truly are. As Alan Watts once said, waking up to who you are requires letting go of who you imagine yourself to be. Tonight, I'm going to take you on my personal journey of being myself by letting go of who I thought I was and by being other people. This is what happens when you go last. <laughs> We've all role-played as kids. Perhaps we were an astronaut, or a vet, or a teacher, or, if you were me, a police officer, the Pink Power Ranger, Bond, a character from a children's book, Dorothy Gale from Kansas, or Glinda, the Good Witch from the North. Full title, by the way. In fact, I took it so far that I demanded that people call me Dorothy Gale from Kansas. Full title. <laughs> My poor mother had to explain to my early childhood teacher that my name was Dorothy Gale from Kansas. Again, full title, or no response. <laughs> As kids, we stopped being who we were to become a completely different person. Through this imagination, we were able to experiment with who we were. As we got older, though, this began to fizzle away. We started to learn who we were without the need for pretending. But what if we went back to something like this? I'm not saying that you have to don your pink Power Ranger uniform and go find aliens in your front yard, nor am I saying you have to dress like a Christmas tree or an outfit out of things in your bathroom. But what I'm saying is, what if you chose to try to be someone else for a day? Maybe if you're really shy, you decide to be extroverted and loud and outspoken for the day. Or if you are that extroverted person, maybe you decide to just be a little more quiet for the day. And I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's going to be hard. You're going to be uncomfortable. We hate breaking out of our comfort zone. There's a reason it's called a comfort zone. But here's the thing. If you stay in there forever, you will never improve. You will never move forward. And sometimes breaking out of that comfort zone doesn't work. And that's fine. But here's the thing. You'll never know until you step out and dive in. When I was in elementary, middle, and beginning of high school, I was super shy. I never talked in class and certainly didn't volunteer for anything. At every parent-teacher conference, my parents were always told that I was a great kid, but I didn't participate in class. For me, participation was terrifying. If a teacher called on me, I would respond but a wave of anxiety would wash over me. I always silently begged that I would never get called on, even though I was actually engaged in the lesson and I did enjoy school. Despite this weird fear that I had of speaking in class, I loved theater. I loved being on stage. I loved that I could be someone else or anything else. I didn't have to be shy, nervous me. Through theater, I became confident with speaking in front of a large auditorium full of people, but speaking in class 
still freaked me out. There was a conflict in my personality, but I had not yet discovered the true me. When I became a junior in high school, a lot of my friends were on the speech team. They were all on the team, and they said it was a lot of fun, and they wanted me to join. For me, this was terrifying. But hanging out with friends, plus. So I decided to join, and I ended up in the category of creative expression. Now, I'm from Minnesota, and Minnesota speech is a little different than Wisconsin speech. There's 13 different categories, one of them creative expression. Creative expression, you write your own speech, and it can be about anything. They tend to be a little bit more theatrical. You can have multiple characters, multiple voices. You can run around and do things on stage. They're not the normal speech. And typically, there's two ways you can go with it. You can either have a really funny speech or a depressing, which we like to call creative depression. For my first ever creative piece, I decided to go creative depression. And I wrote about a woman who ends up in a coma after a skiing accident. She can hear everyone around her, but she can't communicate with them. By the end, she begs for her family to just pull the plug and let her die. <laughs> the speech did well overall, but I hated it. I hated it that speech. Every time I had to give it, I dreaded it. It didn't feel right. It didn't feel me. And here's why. I discovered that by being a woman in a coma who is hopeless, who wants to die, that I was the opposite of that. I was humorous and a fighter. These weren't traits that I wanted to emulate. So, for my senior year, I decided to go a completely different route. And I decided to do creative expression humorous style. And I chose to write my speech about utensils. Because I can. <laughs> and I decided to break my personality down into three aspects. The first one was the normal side of me, which was a spoon. The other part was a Southern Baptist preacher fork. And then I had the evil side of me represented by a Russian knife who wanted to kill everyone in the audience. I love this speech. By adopting these different personalities, I was able to learn more about myself and the parts that make up me. I discovered that these three aspects were part of me. Blown out of proportion. I don't want to murder anyone in the audience tonight. But this did really, really well because I enjoyed it. And through speech and imitating these characters, I discovered that I'm very comfortable talking in front of people. The shy girl in class was not who I actually was. I was able to find my true self through this activity, which I would have never been able to find without. How many of you have a job? Raise your hand. Probably just patient. Great. How many of you, when you got this job, were trained by somebody or you had to shadow somebody? Okay. When you get a job, and normally someone is going to train you or you will have to shadow someone out there. And this applies to any job. Fast food, doctor, teacher, whatever it is. Rarely are you just thrown into the job. You closely observe these people and learn how to do the job and how to act. You might learn that you don't want to imitate this person, and that's fine. They might do something that you strongly disagree with, and then you learn that's not something you want to absorb into yourself. That's fine. That's what this is all about. It's about learning what works for you. You discover who you are this way. Perhaps the best way to imitate someone is to imitate a role model. And I want you right now to think of a positive role model in your life. What is it about that person that makes you admire them so much? What's a trait that they have that you admire? Now my question is, 
Can you imitate that trait? Can you take that aspect of that role model that you love so much and incorporate it into your own personality? For me, I have two role models. I have Misha Collins and Patrick Ness. For those of you who don't know, Misha Collins is an actor on the show Supernatural. He plays the role of Castiel. Besides being an actor, Misha does a lot of volunteer work. He creates charities, and he spurs the world into performing random acts of kindness. I admire this ability that he has, and I try to incorporate as much of that inspiring people to do kindness ability that he has into my own personality. Patrick Ness is an author known for writing very deeply emotional stories that push societal norms about gender relations. This is a great example of imitating an artist. Throughout the ages, artists have been imitating each other and adding their own spin on their own art. I try to incorporate the emotional and character aspects that Patrick Ness uses so well into my own writing. If you're an artist, imitate others. If you're a musician, play other artists' songs. If you're a painter, paint a picture that already exists. Learn how to master these crafts and then make your own. Once you have the art down, make your own art. Perhaps you take something you saw Picasso with you, or perhaps you love the style of ACDC. Or maybe you fell in love with J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter and now you're writing fan fiction. Take these skills that you've learned and now create your own. I'm going to leave you guys with a challenge tonight. I challenge you to imitate someone or something. And as you do, ask yourself, is this me or is this totally against who I am? Experiment and have fun. And remember, 